Wipro is a name in focus. It's at the day's low. It's down about 3.5%. They declared numbers on Friday post-market hours. The management is uh, now joining us. Jatin Dalal, CFO at Wipro, uh, is with us. Jatin, uh, thank you so much for taking out uh, time for us. Could you just first start uh, before the numbers with the acquisition? It's a $500 million acquisition that Wipro has done. What's the edge that it would give to Wipro? So, uh, Pakesh, as you know that uh, the world is moving towards cloud and SFDC and Workday are among, uh, among the largest players in their respective areas. And, uh, and Aperio has, has a critical mass, a company which has been born in cloud, uh, has been uh, running cloud implementation services over a decade, uh, has uh, right... Uh, critical mass of, uh, of uh, close to $200 million that they did in 2015. So it leapfrogs us into a capability uh, to transform uh, the, the front office of our customers, uh, which is the, their client interface, as well as uh, their employee interface through Workday. So uh, it does provide a, a, a wonderful opportunity for future in, in, in the era of cloud. And therefore, uh, uh, we feel very excited and happy uh, that we went ahead with this transaction. You know, is the company right now a loss-making company? Can you just tell us about the financials of uh, the acquired company? No, it's a, it, it has grown quite well over the last few years. Uh, it, it is, uh, um, it is uh, it, its profitability is very similar to a high growth company in this space that you see where their, uh, co their, their gross margins are quite healthy, but they have invested significantly in building um, uh, SGNA uh, to cater to the opportunity that, uh, that uh, the environment presents uh, uh, to, to, uh, in the cloud area. So overall, we fee overall uh, it's, it's a well-run, well-managed organization. It's not a turnaround case. Certainly, we will have a great uh, opportunity to leverage the revenue and the cost synergy that will, uh, that will flow as, as we wo start working together post-consummation uh, of the transaction. And uh, therefore, we will improve margins from there. Uh, but uh, but, but it, is, uh, it is the natural synergy that will make that possible um, as we go along. Right. Let's talk about the Q2 numbers as well. In terms of uh, sectors or in terms of verticals that Wipro would classify, you would say that there was no meaningful acceleration from any large vertical, uh, but it was expected as, as your guidance had shown at the start of Q1? Well, um, we, uh, we, did a, we had a good quarter in healthcare. We had a good quarter in energy and utilities. Uh, we had a decent quarter in communications. So we had a good quarter. Overall, we are quite happy with quarter two because we came at the higher end of our zero to one percent guidance, and uh, uh, and the margins uh, we were able to keep it flat uh, despite having the headwind of uh, two months salary increase. In fact, uh, for for us, this is the toughest quarter from a profitability standpoint because it has the uh, largest planned uh, impact of uh, salary increase that we. Uh, give across our organization from 1st June. And uh, I'm quite happy that we, we overcome, uh, we, we could overcome it and, uh, you know, we, we delivered on a flat uh, margins. In terms of Q2, one of the key highlights was EBITDA or EBIT being uh, flat versus the expectation of decline? Well, I would say both uh, the upper end of the guidance and uh, EBIT margin. And EBIT margin, certainly because we, we were able to pull out um, a lot of um, uh, efficiency out of our uh, utilization, uh, which is among the highest we have had in last uh, few quarters at 17.2%. Uh, uh, it is um, 134 basis point higher than what it was in quarter one. Uh, we moved offshore uh, percentage of our revenue by about 50 basis points. And uh, most importantly, we had close to uh, we had more than 3,000 uh, uh, um, sort of FTEs or, or, or resources uh, being released as a result of the automation uh, uh, that we deployed in our delivery. And that, of course, helped uh, the margin. So overall, uh, overall uh, quite, a, quite a good uh, 
uh, focused execution on on maintaining profitability at the same level as it was in quarter one. As far as uh, you know, utilizations are concerned, that went up. But if still one would look at the utilizations, uh, there is a lot of scope for improvement. So that can provide an uh, uptick to the margins. Yes, uh, uh, we know. Okay, certainly, it's a it's a key focus area for us uh, uh, as uh, as we as we embrace um, you know the newer technologies and, and newer ways of of working. Uh, for example, uh, you know uh, the work could be what could be done in in three ways. Uh, one, it could be automated. The second could be crowd source, and third could be in a dedicated fashion. And if you really can get a, a, a well coordinated effort around it, you could change the the, the rules of the game vis-a-vis uh, -vis how you manage your uh, workforce more effectively. Uh, than you have ever done before. So, for example, the bench, traditional bench, which is which is today not productive, uh, could be a, a very productive resource for you in form of a private uh, crowd sourcing of work uh, that could take place within organization. So, utilization, I wouldn't see certainly from a traditional lens as we go forward. Right. Uh, you know, as far as uh, pricing is concerned. Is that an issue or it's just about lack of spending? Pricing in traditional uh, uh, services uh, are, are driven by the impact of, uh, you know, the ask from customer of reducing total cost of ownership. I wouldn't say we are in any, any way close to a situation where customers are, you know, uh, seeking price uh, reductions or stuff like that. But every time we rebuild, um, uh, for uh, for existing piece of work that we are doing with our customer, or we rebid, or we go and bid for a new piece of work, there is always an expectation to do more uh, uh, for less uh, from from customer, and I think that is quite natural and has been natural uh, for for as much uh, you know for for all the years that we have been existing, and our challenge constantly is to keep our cost curve ahead of our price curve so that we can continue to deliver uh, that uh, productivity delight to our customers. As far as key client matrix is concerned, $100 million client has declined further and earlier we've spoken about it and you've taken a lot of measures but it uh, seems to be taking longer for the client matrix to improve. So Bhagat, actually we are quite happy though it is not fully reflected in the numbers yet. As you can see our top customer has actually uh, grown uh, after a few, after uh, you know last couple of quarters of uh, of uh, uh, moderate performance, um, greater than 50 customers are stable at 33. Greater than 75 uh, million dollar customers are stable at 19. Uh, I do see a movement um, in greater than 100 million dollars, but I am not uh, I am not unduly worried because. Uh, there has been currency volatilities and there could always be a case where uh, because a particular project has come to an end, one customer has become 99 or 98 million versus 100 million. But overall, we are quite happy with the progress we are making, though it is not fully reflective on the uh, metrics that we publish externally yet. As far as IT environment is concerned, it's changing quite uh, fast in terms of client, in terms of the product that they are using. Uh, how is Wipro adapting to these changing? Is that transition taking, uh, you know, this client matrix uh, which is not looking that good? I think uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of. Uh, I think we will go back to the times where a lot of organic, um, when I mean organic, uh, you know, incremental, uh, small pieces of work being handed over by customer as we, as customer invests in digital and embraces uh, newer investment in application space. Um, the earlier growth, which was uh, not earlier, but but we have been in times where the growth has been led by large deals. I think that will continue, but uh, but you will have an additional uh, additional um, additional sort of uh, tailwind in form of uh, uh, small incremental pieces of work as as applications and digital. Uh, start, uh, 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 you know, uh, fully are leveraged as, as a service offering. So, so I'm I'm quite uh, I'm quite excited where we could be in in in, uh, in medium term on uh, client metrics. 
As far as guidance is concerned for Q3, it seems to be a muted one. Uh, are you trying to be cautious uh, going into the quarter three? Well, we, we are never cautious or optimistic. We, 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 we say, uh, we share the guidance as we see it, as, uh, as we see it today. And uh, I would say that uh, uh, it, it, it does bake in uh, the typical uh, vagaries of, of uh, third quarter of our fiscal where there are lower number of uh, working days and there are impact of holiday season, of, um, you know, certain, uh, certain SBUs like certain uh, industries like uh, retail is prone to cut back on spend as they focus on maximizing their revenues from the quarter. So some of these vagaries have been sort of uh, uh, built into our guidance. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't see it, uh, um, uh, I mean, I, I don't see it uh, either optimistic or, or, or cautious. Does the guidance include the acquisition? What's the timeline of the acquisition? So we have not broken up organic and inorganic and we have never done in past. But yes, we do expect uh, Aperio acquisition to be uh, completed during the course of the quarter and from, uh, from uh, uh, and as per the accounting rules, we will, we will take the revenues from the acquisition accordingly. Right. If we just look at the guidance, you know, it would be a less than 10% sort of a growth in uh, uh, this year for Wipro. When uh, can we expect uh, industry leading uh, growth? You've taken a lot of measures. Uh, when will it start to, you know, come into the top line as well? A bit uh, this quarter, surprised on the positive side. I will, uh, I'll be very happy with that. Let me start by saying that, Pankaj. So we all come every morning with a view that we need to get back to sector leading growth. And, uh, and get back to much better margin trajectory. And if you see, step back and see away from quarterly pluses and minuses, our investment in health plan services, our investment in digital, which is, which is much larger, in, I mean, is, is an internal investment. Of course, we also acquire design it. Uh, acquisition now of Aperio and earlier localization acquisition of Sealand, we certainly are trying to, uh, to do things which we think will matter for our future and in that process if we do have to make certain um, investments in form of margin dilution for a few quarters we are willing to do that and uh, hopefully uh, we will come out uh, stronger with the additional strength of these investments and uh, that's the focus Pankaj. Jatin, thank you so much for explaining us about the quarter and what's the view going ahead. That was the management of Wipro 3.6% down, it's a results reaction, it's among the top loser on the nifty pack.